You think of a desert and you picture heat, blistering, relentless. Turn your flip-flops into melted goo kind of heat. Sand dunes rippling under a blazing sun, mirage puddles, sunburns, camels that look like they've given up. But here's a twist that might surprise you. Deserts can get freezing cold at night, like bring your parka, water turns to ice, better cuddle your camel kind of cold. And it happens almost every single night in some places. How is that even possible? How can a place cook you by day and chill you to the bone by night? Welcome to the strange physics of the desert. First, what makes a desert a desert? Contrary to popular belief, being a desert isn't about being hot. It's about being dry. A desert is defined as any region that receives less than 10 inches of rainfall per year. That means Antarctica is a desert. So is Greenland. And yes, so is the Sahara. The common factor isn't the heat. It's the lack of moisture in the air and soil. And here's the first clue. Moisture is really good at storing heat. So when a place is bone dry, its temperature has a hard time holding steady. And that leads us right into the nighttime mystery. Why desert get so hot. During the day, let's start with the daytime. The desert gets blisteringly hot during the day because there's nothing stopping the sun's rays from hitting the ground directly. No clouds, no humidity, just raw, unfiltered solar energy slamming into the sand. And sand, by the way, is terrible at holding heat. It heats up quickly but doesn't store that energy well. So during the day, surface temperatures can spike to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or even higher. You can fry an egg, you can burn your feet, but wait until the sun dips. Now the sun sets. And everything changes. As soon as the sun goes down, the heat party is over. Remember how we said sand doesn't store heat well? That means it also loses heat really fast. There's no water vapor in the air to trap outgoing infrared radiation. There are no clouds to reflect heat back down, so the warmth just leaks into space. This is known as radiative cooling. And in deserts, it happens with brutal efficiency. Without insulation, the temperature can drop by 40 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit in just a few hours. In some high-altitude deserts like the Atacama or parts of the Gobi, it can go from shorts and sandals weather to frost on your sleeping bag cold in one night. So where does the heat go? It doesn't go anywhere fancy. It just escapes into the black void of space. At night, the Earth radiates heat back upward in the form of infrared waves. In most places, clouds and moisture trap some of that energy and reflect it back down like a thermal blanket. But in the desert, no moisture, no clouds, no blanket, just bye-bye. That's why deserts cool down so dramatically. Let's talk specifics. Sahara versus Atacama versus Mojave. Sahara Desert. Daytime temps often reach 120 degrees Fahrenheit, but nights can drop to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, or even close to freezing in winter. Atacama Desert, Chile. Because it's at higher altitude and extremely dry, temperatures can drop below freezing at night despite sunny, pleasant days. Mojave Desert, USA. A classic example of swing weather. One hour you're sweating, three hours later you're shivering in a hoodie. The bigger the gap between day and night temperatures, the drier and more exposed the landscape is. How animals survive desert nights. Desert wildlife are masters of thermoregulation. They've evolved over millennia to handle both scorching days and freezing nights. With style, jerboas dig burrows that stay warm overnight and emerge only after sunset. Sidewinder snakes use the sand itself as insulation, curling beneath the surface during cold spells. Scorpion Scorpions slow their metabolism to conserve energy and heat. Each species has a trick, because out here, adaptability isn't just a perk, it's survival. And even insects, like desert beetles, have adapted body shapes and postures that reduce heat loss and maintain moisture. Tiny strategies that mean the difference between life and death. Some larger animals, like foxes or desert hares, use their large ears as radiators during the day and then tuck themselves into dens or crevices at night to conserve warmth. The desert forces every creature to become a thermal strategy. Now imagine being a plant in that environment. You're stuck in the ground. You can't run. You can't borrow a hoodie. All you've got is biology, and that's where things get interesting. First off, water storage. Most desert plants, like cacti and succulents, are basically squishy water balloons with survival degrees. They store moisture in thick, fleshy tissues, not just for drought, but also to buffer against cold. That water acts as a thermal reservoir, absorbing heat during the day and slowly releasing it at night. It's like having a built-in hot water bottle, except it's full of cactus juice. Next, let's talk insulation. Some plants are covered in waxy coatings that help reduce water loss, but also trap heat. Others grow tiny hairs. Yes, plant bodies 
body hair, which create a thin layer of still air around them like a natural puffer jacket. It's not much, but when the night air drops to near freezing, every fuzzy little fiber helps. How humans have learned to adapt. Long before air conditioning, desert cultures developed ingenious ways to cope. Nomadic tribes build tents with thick insulating materials like wool or layered cloth that keep heat in at night. Adobe houses store heat during the day and release it slowly as the temperature drops. Desert clothing is loose-fitting and layered, light for the day, protective for the cold evening. Modern explorers still rely on layering and thermal blankets because underestimating a desert night can be fatal. And even today, architects in desert cities like Dubai or Phoenix apply old wisdom in new forms, thermal mass materials, reflective coatings, and advanced insulation. It's a reminder that human innovation often begins with understanding nature. We've even developed temperature-sensitive windows and passive solar designs that automatically adjust to daily heat swings, technology mimicking survival strategies nature invented ages ago. Here's a cosmic twist. Mars is essentially one giant desert, with daytime highs around 70 degrees Fahrenheit and nighttime lows plunging to negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit. No atmosphere, no moisture, no thermal blanket. Sound familiar? In fact, scientists study Earth's deserts, like the Atacama, as proxies for Martian conditions. And future Mars explorers? They'll be living in an environment even more extreme than any desert on Earth. So that weird temperature crash in the Sahara? Consider it a training ground for space. NASA even tests rovers in desert regions on Earth to simulate Martian nights. That's how harsh and useful these ecosystems are for science. Here's the kicker. Climate change is starting to mess with the desert's cold nights. Because greenhouse gases trap more heat in the atmosphere, even places that used to cool dramatically at night are now holding on to more warmth. That might sound good, no more freezing toes, but it's terrible for ecosystems that depend on nightly cooling. Some desert plants need cold nights to trigger flowering. Some animals need it for reproduction cycles. The desert isn't just hot and dry, it's precisely calibrated, and we're nudging the thermostat. Add to that the rising use of artificial lighting and urban sprawl in desert cities, and you get something called the urban heat island effect. Even in places that should go dark and cold, the temperature clings longer, reshaping life in subtle but powerful ways. In short, deserts are warming, day and night, but the loss of their chilling contrast may turn out to be more disruptive than we expect. If you've ever camped in a desert, you know the night brings a silence so deep it's almost loud. But listen closely, and you'll hear things. The rustle of nocturnal creatures emerging from burrows, the distant howl of a coyote, the sudden rush of wind sweeping over dunes. The temperature drop transforms not just the air, but the entire mood. It's a haunting, beautiful calm, a reminder that the desert isn't dead at night, it just whispers. Sometimes the stars feel closer than the ground. The desert sky, free from light pollution, becomes a theater of galaxies, cold night, warm stars. So next time you think of deserts as just blazing hot sandscapes, remember, they're also icy, unpredictable, and thermally chaotic. In a way, deserts are like cosmic mood rings. They feel everything. They absorb all the heat, then give it all away. Every day is fire, every night is ice. But beneath the extremes, there's balance. A delicate, ancient rhythm between sun and sky, sand and stars. The kind of rhythm that lets life exist in the unlikeliest of places. If we pay attention, deserts can teach us more than we expect, not just about climate and physics, but about resilience, adaptation, and beauty and harshness. So, if you ever visit a desert, bring sunscreen, and a blanket, and a bit of awe for a place that survives by being everything, all at once. Because when the sun goes down, the desert isn't empty. It's alive, in a quieter, colder, but equally extraordinary way.